Hey biology students, in this video we're going to cover phagocytosis and antigen presentation. So in the last video we learned about who the phagocytes are. Do you remember who the king of the phagocytes is? That's right, the macrophage. Who else is a phagocyte? Neutrophils. So phagocytosis performed by phagocytes, classes of leukocytes that are further subcategorized as phagocytes, meaning they do phagocytosis. So the macrophage, the neutrophils, dendritic cells, eosinophils, remember eosinophils are somewhat phagocytic, they mostly function in extracellular digestion rather than intracellular digestion, and phagocytosis is a process of intracellular digestion, meaning that the pathogen is engulfed inside of the phagocyte, and then it's digested inside of the phagocyte. So those are the primary phagocytes. The other one that you may not be aware of is actually B cells. B cells have a phagocytic role as well, but that's part of third line of defense, and we're still pretty much on second line of defense here. With phagocytosis, is another innate immune response, part of nonspecific immunity. So in this first diagram I want us to look at, this is actually a picture of a, of a macrophage, although this could be any of those phagocytes, but we'll say it's a macrophage. And so the macrophage has these receptors on its surface, multiple receptors, and they're only giving you a couple examples. So we have the peptidoglycan receptor, a flagellin receptor, and a lipopeptide receptor. So these are receptors that bind specifically to parts of, in this case, bacterial pathogens. So lipopeptides, remember this is part of LPS, the L LPS layer of gram-negative bacteria. Flagellin, remember that is the tail or the flagella of many bacteria. They have that tail for motility. So this would be a protein component called flagellin that makes up the flagella. And then remember peptidoglycan, this is part of the cell wall of both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So it's a component of their cell wall. So these are all parts of bacteria that bind specifically to these receptors on the surface of macrophage. And notice that the macrophage, as well as most of the other phagocytes, the macrophage has many different pathogen recognition receptors. We call those PRRs pathogen recognition receptors. So some examples, lipopeptide receptor, flagellin receptor, and peptidoglycan receptor. So they can recognize different components of bacteria, as well as viruses, as well as fungi, as well as other parasites, but we're keeping it simple here and we're just talking about 
um, bacteria in this particular diagram. So we've been talking about how the immune system is designed to target and eliminate pathogens, right? Disease causing microorganisms that our body encounters constantly in the, in the environment. So in order to understand how phagocytosis is initiated, you need to understand that pathogens, okay, bacteria, viruses, whatever we're talking about here, are composed of antigens. So now we start using this word antigens. So antigens refer to smaller molecules like proteins and polysaccharides. So what are some examples of antigens on this slide? Lipopeptide, this would be an antigen. Let's label it AG for antigen. Flagellin, let's label that AG. That's a component of the flagella. It's a component of the pathogen. It's not the whole pathogen, but a component of it. Peptidoglycan, that would also be an antigen. So any component molecule, protein, or polysaccharide that makes up a pathogen could be part of its cell wall, could be a spike protein, which we see in viruses, could be part of the flagella or the capsule or the LPS layer, all sorts of things like that. Okay, those are what we mean by antigens. So now we're going to start using this word antigen. But understand that pathogens are composed of, actually, let's add this word, many. <laughs> Happen to have a spot for it too on the slide. Okay, so they're composed of many antigens. And then macrophages and other phagocytes, like everybody in this category here. Okay, B cells are sort of in their own situation, so we'll we'll talk about those later, but the these are all part of innate immunity. D cells, neutrophil, macrophages, dendritic cells, eosinophils. These would be the cells that have multiple pathogen recognition receptors. In other words, they can recognize many different types of antigens. Okay, so macrophages, let's write something about that. Macrophages can recognize multiple antigens. And that's because of all the pathogen, the different types of pathogen recognition receptors present on these cells of the second line of defense. So what you're seeing in this diagram also is that the antigen fits very specifically in this binding site of the receptor. And that's a really common theme in biology that you may have noticed. It's important in understanding how enzymes work, how enzymes bind to substrate molecules, but it's also really important in receptor, in receptor antigen interactions. So these receptors have a particular shape to them and they match a particular antigen. And that's what they're also trying to show you in the diagram. So now let's describe the process of phagocytosis. We'll use a macrophage as an example of a phagocytic cell that performs this function. So what happens is this story begins with some sort of pathogen. We'll say it's a bacteria. And this bacteria invades the body. And of course, it has to get past first line of defense. So somehow it's gotten through those physical and chemical barriers we discussed in the first line of defense. 
and now it's inside the body, maybe floating around the bloodstream, maybe in the tissues, and the white blood cells come to the scene, the macrophage. So the macrophage has binding sites on it that recognize the antigen components of this pathogen. So for simplicity, let's say that, that this pathogen has these blue antigens. This is gonna be, let's say, part of its cell wall. Maybe this is peptidoglycan, just for simplicity here. So the pathogen is composed of many antigens, but let's just describe this one here. So we'll say this is the antigen, which I tend to label AG for antigen. And so the macrophage comes along and has a pathogen recognition receptor that recognizes the pathogen. Actually, let's make this cell much bigger. Let's make it really big. Let's go big here. Okay, <laughs> macrophage. So the, the PRR, okay, so this is, this would be the pathogen recognition receptor of the macrophage recognizes the antigen on the surface of this particular pathogen, recognizes that cell wall component, and then that initiates the macrophage to engulf the pathogen. So the macrophage is going to engulf the pathogen, and it's gonna engulf it in a membrane-bound vesicle that we call a phagosome. So this would be a phagosome. So now it has engulfed the pathogen because it recognized the antigen. So it engulfs it. And then it's gonna digest this pathogen and how it's gonna do that well, it's gonna fuse with another membrane-bound organelle in the cell called a lysosome. And so the lysosome contains many digestive enzymes. Okay, and that's an organelle characteristic of eukaryotic cells. It's a membrane-bound vesicle called a lysosome, and it's going to contain the digestive enzymes we need to digest this pathogen. So what happens is the phagosome and the lysosome fuse, and when they fuse, so I'm trying to show the phagosome fusing with the lysosome here, so here come the digestive enzymes into the phagosome, and here's, here's our pathogen, and we're gonna call this a phago, phagolysosome, composed of a phagosome and a lysosome. They basically, they fuse into one. And then the digestive enzymes attack the pathogen and digest it. So it binds to it and, um, and breaks it apart. So we'll show that in the next in the next diagram here. So phagolysosome digests it and <clears throat> releases, let's see, I want to show something here. I wanna show this line gone, if you can erase that. <laughs> what I wanna show is that we've digested the pathogen 
releasing these antigen components. And so this is going to be released. Okay, so now the pathogen has been fully digested or destroyed as a result of the phagocytosis process. I also have an animation of this. So in this animation, they show us the little bacterial cell that becomes engulfed by the phagocyte, a macrophage, and shows that they bind. And it's actually showing something we'll discuss in a little while here about complement, how complement can assist in phagocytosis. But what happens here is they bind and then see it gets swallowed. Okay, that's the phagosome. So the microorganism, the pathogen, gets swallowed by the phagocyte, called a phagosome there. And then the lysosome, and here they're showing multiple, so that could be more than one lysosome, comes in and fuses. And now we call it a phagolysosome. And now watch the action of the digestive enzymes within the phagolysosome. They're chomping down on that bacteria, aren't they? And digesting it into little bits. And then those little bits get released out. Okay, and of course those are not harmful anymore because they're just digested particles of the pathogen. I also like this. <clears throat> I like this particular video because it shows us Neutrophils are white blood cells that hunt and kill bacteria. In this spread, a neutrophil is seen in the midst of red blood cells. Staphylococcus aureus bacteria have been added. The small clump of bacteria release a chemoattractant that is sensed by the neutrophil. The neutrophil becomes polarized and starts chasing the bacteria. The bacteria, bounced around by thermal energy, move in a random path, seeming to avoid their predator. Eventually, the neutrophil catches up with the bacteria and engulfs them by phagocytosis. <laughs> and of course he burps. <laughs> Great. Okay, so that's showing you phagocytosis. Process of digesting pathogens. Now I want to add a little bit of detail to this concept and tell you about something called antigen presentation. So antigen presentation is something that only certain phagocytes can do. So antigen presentation is performed by macrophages, dendritic cells, and B cells. So only specialized cells have the ability to do this. And the reason why they can do this is that these cells all have a particular type of receptor on its surface. So it involves a specific receptor called MHC class 2. So MHC stands for this major histo -com compatibility complex major histo compatibility complex and then there's actually two types we call them class, it's usually we call them class one and class two. So turns out class one, this is found on 
all nucleated body cells, every single body cell with the exception being not on your red blood cells. Red blood cells have different receptors on their surface, which is why we we refer to blood type as A blood type or B blood type or O blood type or AB blood type. That has to do with different receptors, um, the A antigen and the B antigen. But all other nucleated body cells, so your skin, your liver, your, your stomach, your whatever, all of those carry what are called class one histocompatibility uh, receptors, MHCs. And the purpose of that is actually to recognize self antigens. So this is how the body knows that it's self. It's involved in self recognition. So the immune system should not target and destroy your own cells in the same way that you wouldn't want soldiers in an army that, let's say we wouldn't want the U.S. Army, we wouldn't want the U.S. Army to be deployed on a population of Americans and kill Americans because our army is designed to protect us from foreign invaders, not uh, kill civilians. So the immune system goes through a very careful regulation process so that it doesn't destroy its own cells. And class one, uh, MHC class one is involved in that. So these are special recognition flags, if you will. So on the surface of a body cell, we would find these class, call them MHC class one, we would find these class one receptors and they're like little recognition flags on the exterior of the cell, letting the body know and the immune system know that this is this is self, this isn't a foreign cell, this is my cell, these are my civilian cells, so soldiers of the immune system, these leukocytes, these white blood cells are sort of analogous to soldiers in an army, and we don't want them to kill the civilians, okay? Does that ever happen where the immune system destroys self cells? Yes, it's called autoimmune disease. So autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis, for example, where the myelin coating of neurons is destroyed by the immune system, that is a disorder of the immune system. That's not a normal thing. That is a pathology where the immune system destroys its own cells. And we're not going to go into all the details about why that happens, but I just want you to be aware that there are these recognition receptors involved in self, self identity in the immune system. So all of our cells have these class one uh, receptors. Class two receptors are found only on cells involved in antigen presenting. So only on immune cells involved in this antigen presentation. So who are those cells again? Well, it's on the slide. So these would be macrophages, dendritic cells, and B cells. Those are the only ones that have, in addition to the MHC1, so this would be a macrophage, remember that's a symbol for macrophage, so the macrophage, yeah, it's going to have MHC1. So we'll call this MHC1. And there's my cat. <laughs> Hi, Hunter. Um, okay, so this would be MHC2. So they also have MHC2. Great, my cat found my hideout in the sauna. And now he's coming to say hi. Also have fur babies in addition to my other babies to contend with <laughs> as I'm creating presentations. All right, so macrophages with MHC2. 
So now let's go back to, if you would, let's go back to this diagram we did. And I need to add something to this. And what I want to add to this is that the cell, the macrophage in this picture, is also synthesizing MHC class two receptors in the, uh, in the ribosome. And so it's making these MHC2 receptors. And while this process of phagocytosis is happening, some of those antigens that are being digested within the phagolysosome, some of those antigens actually attach to the MHC2 receptor. You see that? So one of those antigens, this blue antigen, gets attached to the MHC2 receptor. And then in the process of moving this, this uh, you know, synthesizing this receptor and then processing it and, and, and putting it on the surface of the macrophage, this MHC2 receptor will be complexed to the antigen, this particular antigen, which whatever it might be, okay, peptidoglycan or something. So we would call this situation, we would call this a complex. So it's an MHC2 antigen complex that forms. And this process is called antigen presentation. And when this happens, we call the macrophage, we call it an antigen presenting cell or an APC, antigen presenting cell, antigen presentation, because it's displaying the specific antigen on its surface. And this reminds me actually of my kids when they eat. <laughs> because remember, macrophages are the big eaters. This process of phagocytosis, this is cell eating, is what that literally translates to. But just like my toddlers, when they eat, most of their food ends up, well, most of it ends up on the floor, but a lot of it ends up all over their face. So after feeding them, you know, I got to wipe, wipe them down, wipe everything down, but their face is covered in crumbs of whatever they ate. And I think that's a really good analogy to what's happening in antigen presentation. So the macrophage is eating the bacteria, chomping down on it, and it, like making crumbs think cookie crumbs, and then those cookie crumbs are displayed on the surface of the cell, sort of like if you had crumbs all over your face from something that you ate, you know, and you get chocolate all over your face or whatever, you know, you've got evidence of whatever you ate on the surface of your face. Well, that's analogous to what's happening here in antigen presentation. So the Macrophage is displaying, displaying this particular antigen. And once we now transition to a specific antigen involved in, a, in an attack designed to go after a specific antigen, we now transition to third line of defense, to specific immunity. And these antigen presenting cells, they act as transitional cells from second line of defense, which was a, a nonspecific response, and phagocytosis is considered a nonspecific response. But once we transition to antigen presentation, we now transition to a process that will initiate the third and final layer of defense mechanisms against pathogens in the body. 
And so this antigen presenting cell is going to actually initiate that process. And I think we'll, we'll save that for the next uh, future video to describe who it presents to, because the point is it's wearing this particular antigen like a badge, and it's going to go and present that antigen to a very specific set of cells involved in third line of defense. So more on that later.